We have love for Africa. There is hope, hope in Africa. We are serving Africa. We are serving Africa. With all passion, we are serving Africa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to Serving Africa, where we are looking at the various challenges facing the African continent and what is being done to solve these problems and improve the living conditions for the millions of people living in Africa. Today we are joined by the head of the Alternative Energy Committee from the International Association of Ahmadi Architects and Engineers and an engineer that has been working alongside him in their many projects. Today we are looking at the problem of energy. Energy poverty affects many parts of the world, but when one looks at the African continent, it is especially shocking, a continent so rich in natural resources, especially renewable energies, such as solar power. Yet towns and cities lack energy and rural villages can be completely deprived. All of this has a massive impact on the standard of living and day-to-day -day lives of all of those who are suffering. Africa has huge potentials to benefit from alternative energy supplies such as solar energy from the sun. In 80% of Africa, over the span of a year, one square meter of land receives the same amount of energy from the sun that a small UK household would need to run annually. Yet there is an energy crisis in Africa. More than 620 million people in sub-Saharan Africa remain without access to electricity. Rural areas take the brunt of it, with only 45% of those that are living in these areas having access to the electrical grid. Some sub-Saharan African countries have only extended their grid to a third or less of their country. What this means is that in an ever-increasing technological and globalized world, rural areas lack the means of simple communication and productivity causing them to be left behind and isolated from the rest of the world. So, Suhail so we've just been seeing how Africa has been so badly affected by this energy crisis. Can you tell us as an expert why this is taking place and has it just happened suddenly? No, I think uh, this, is, uh, this has been happening over uh, uh, it's a decades of uh, neglect. Uh, by the uh, by the governments and uh, they have totally neglected the energy generation uh, uh, for the for the country and uh, you know if you look at uh, any of the countries in africa unfortunately it's uh, a very uh, uh, bad example of uh, uh, grid installation so uh, i think that uh, you can uh, we can blame the, the governments for not doing their job rightly. And these grids, were they installed in colonial times or are these ones which have been recently erected by these different new countries that have appeared in sub-Saharan Africa? You see, the grids are dependent on how, on how much energy is being produced. If there is no energy that is being produced, if there are no uh, uh, projects in pipeline for mega projects uh, like uh, water dams and uh, uh, solar farms, then uh, there is no need for grid. So obviously, I think the, the governments need to plan for their uh, future uh, uh, energy demand, and uh, they, they need to have these uh, mega projects in pipeline to, 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 uh, uh, to, uh, to address all this uh, energy poverty. Uh, Noman Sab, you're an engineer, you've been to Africa, you've seen it firsthand. Um, in terms of the demand for electricity, obviously if there's a population there, there's always going to be a demand. Is it that the demand is not vocalising its needs or is it that the governments are being neglectful of their respective populations? Um, I'd say it's quite clear that uh, the governments themselves also realise that there is a demand and uh, in, indeed in some countries they openly um, declare that they really want to fix the problem. Um, and so I don't think any country will, in Africa will say that they have enough energy or that there's no need for energy because it's, uh, it's quite clear uh, that there is. But obviously the, the challenges at the moment are many 
um, and they themselves are sometimes finding it unsurmountable um, to overcome those challenges and provide electricity to every household. Are there any particular countries that are suffering the most? I think the Sub-Saharan uh, uh, Africa, which includes Burkina Faso, Mali, um, and uh, Sierra Leone, Ghana, uh, uh, all, all these countries, they have significant problems. Uh, as soon as you get out of their uh, main city, there is, uh, the, the grid system is non-existent. And uh, obviously that has a direct uh, impact on the uh, on on businesses and also the country's progress plus the economics. And at the moment, is the main supply of fuel from fossil fuels, or what are they dependent on in most of these countries? I'd say that uh, it's a mix of uh, uh, energy generation. They are they are using, uh, for example, in in local in suburbs, they are using diesel generators, petrol generators, and uh, uh, there is uh, some African countries which are actually selling energy to their neighboring countries through, through, through grids. And uh, uh, so there is uh, a mix there, but uh, uh, this is not to say that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the natural resources are there in each country. So if the countries would like to, uh, to, to produce the power themselves, then uh, the, the provisions are, are there. The, the, the sun is available in abundance. The, uh, the rivers are there. The, uh, the, um, the lakes are there. And uh, just give an example of a, of a country. I went to uh, DR Congo. I was in this uh, uh, city called uh, uh, Kananga. We, uh, I went with the mayor of, the, uh, of that city and we, we visited this site on a, uh, a river which was just, uh, I think, just half a kilometer wide river. And uh, a Belgium, uh, Belgian uh, company had installed the run of the river generators to, to provide uh, the electricity for that city, uh, Kananga. And when I uh, visited that, these are expensive uh, generators and well built, but they had broken down. And obviously there was no, no one to replace them or no one to repair them. So it's not just a matter of uh, getting uh, uh, a uh, infrastructure installed. It's also, it needs to be maintained and it needs to be taken care of. Uh, and it needs to be updated, uh, uh, you know, as the, as the time moves on. So there are different challenges in each, each, each country. So let's have a look now at what exactly is happening on the field and then once we've had a look at what's happening in Africa we'll come back to the studio and see how these issues can be resolved. We are in Bonny, the capital city of Bonny County. Uh, we came on an installation on three buildings, the mosque and the clinic, the clinic and the mission house. I joined the two yesterday and uh, we install the full, yeah, full solar panel in the mission house, the mosque, and the clinics. There are two, we install two in the clinics, then uh, mission house one, mosque one. So here's how we've looked at the issues affecting Africa, but what's the solution? Tell us how the continent can move forward. You see, uh, uh, the, the solution is that uh, the countries need to, be, uh, to invest in bigger uh, mega projects where uh, they are able to uh, uh, utilize these resources available in that country in a bigger way. For example, by producing uh, uh, dams where there is uh, facilities for uh, lakes and, uh, and rivers, and similarly uh, uh, utilizing the solar, which is available in abundance, and uh, uh, you know, investing in uh, solar farms. So there are many other solutions which are uh, available uh, through which uh, they can, uh, using the grid, they can uh, reach the, uh, the remote villages. But these countries uh, are, ca uh, are scrapped for cash. They just do not absolutely. have the means, they absolutely. don't have the capital to yes. actually invest. So yeah. what's your solution in yeah. this uh, dire situation? You see, um, uh, the, the quicker and the easier way of resolving these issues is by uh, introducing uh, or installing the off-grid 
uh, solar systems or uh, uh, creating mini grids, which are which are not uh, relying on uh, 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 power source, which is uh, located far away from where it's being used. So these can be, for example, if uh, you uh, if we look at uh, a solution which uh, IAAA he has been providing uh, uh, since two thousand and four. Uh, is, is is small scale solar system which uh, so this which is a solar panel that, in front of us. Yes. Can you tell the viewers what exactly they're looking at? Uh, the you see, uh, this is uh, a mini version of uh, what we are installing uh, in Africa. This is a two hundred watt solar system, but what we install in Africa is a five hundred watt uh, solar panel, which goes uh, on top of the roof and is uh, is nailed into the roof, and. Through uh, the uh, the solar panel, uh, we are able to produce direct current, and uh, uh, then we have a series of components that uh, we use to uh, convert the DC current that is available in the solar panels to to AC current, which uh, the uh, the people can readily use and they don't have to rely on DC components for lighting, etc. So a panel of 500 watt can supply enough energy for a family, yeah. a village, what does it do? So for example, if uh, we are installing it at a community, cen community center or a mosque, then what that provides is that uh, is five lights, internal lights, two outdoor external lights, and uh, 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 the uh, provision for MTA, for example, a, a, a satellite receiver, a fan, a mobile charging facility, and all that can be run for about five to six hours. It's quite amazing, just from the rays of the sun. What else do we have on the table here? Uh, so uh, let's start with the solar panel, the most, uh, one of the most important parts of the system. And solar systems will uh, only be charging uh, during the day. So in between, we have a battery so that during the night, the battery can uh, essentially run the system as well. And during the day, it'll charge the batteries. Um, so with that in mind, um, I'll take you over to the charge controller here, which is the white piece. And this controls the charge into the battery, which I just mentioned. So without this charge controller, it's quite possible the battery, if it's permanently connected to a panel, it will actually blow, uh, literally an explosion. Um, so this makes sure that not too much and not too little charge goes into the battery. So moving on from that, we have um, something called an inverter. Again, a very critical part of the system. And okay, so essentially to run the solar power panels, you need to have all these three different components working together as a unit. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. So Naman Saab, when you've provided these solar panels, it's also your duty to ensure that they're running effectively, even in the most remotest parts of Africa. How do you ensure that? Um, <clears throat> there are several uh, approaches. So currently, we actually go out um, to those remote locations and repair them. Um, so teams of engineers go out to various locations. Um, this year, we built a prototype for a remote monitoring system, uh, which you can see on the left there. So this small black box? This here. small black box, essentially. Okay. Um, we developed this ourselves uh, with all of our own requirements in, in mind and essentially it transmits data to us from kind of remote, remote locations where normally we wouldn't receive any information about a fault or a glitch or whether even the system uh, is working okay. Um, but now we're prototyping a solution, which this solution, which will allow us to receive that information almost on a daily basis. So we can collate information about uh, systems that are working and not working and quickly identify where uh, repairs are needed. Yes. Okay, and then what about the cost effectiveness of the solar panels? How cost effective are they? How easy is it for a village or a mosque to have a solar panel? S solar panels are now becoming quite mature, um, the technology. So every year we see increases in the efficiency of the solar systems and indeed their costs coming down. Uh, as more and more are produced, obviously the bulk cost effects come into play and the prices are getting cheaper. And, um, and how about the, the longevity of these solar The longevity, panels? the solar systems, are, the solar panels are probably the most uh, long lasting out of all the components. They can last even up to 20 years. So we seldom have problems with solar panels, um, in fact. And our choice of vendor for our components tend to be those that are the most reliable and can give us the longest uh, life as well. So a typical unit comprising all these different uh, uh, things would cost how much in pounds? 
um, a typical unit uh, with you know the best parts that you know we we find suitable will be around uh, fifteen hundred pounds. Is that right? And that provides energy for five, ten years, or uh, with repairs at least yes, ten, fifteen years um, on the for the places that need repairs anyway. Brilliant. I mean, fifteen hundred pounds and so many years of benefit. It sounds mm. like an amazing deal for those people on the ground, so desperately needing yes. uh, that energy source and the electricity. Let's go back to the ground and see uh, what's happening in Africa. The whole team has been trained, and it feels really pleasant. The main challenge we face is reaching the village. Once we do reach, the work does get completed by the grace of Allah. So yes, the real difficulty is getting to the village. We managed to overcome that, and now, having completed this project, we move on to the next village. It's quite amazing that um, we take electricity for granted here and uh, in those places where they long for it, people are seeing dreams about having this uh, electricity installed because it has such an impact on their lives. Um, so here's how the electricity is provided. It then has to be maintained. I understand that um, the IEEE have worked on uh, the maintenance of these solar panels in Sierra Leone as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, as uh, Nomansa was mentioning before, that uh, these uh, the there are various components of the solar system. The main components that we have to change after five or six years are uh, the uh, inverter and the batteries. And uh, uh, you see, uh, they they once they are maintained, then uh, the system can go for go on for another five to ten years. So uh, uh, once people start to use the uh, the solar system they they obviously take a lot of benefit out of it and uh, you know uh, they use it for security lighting they use it for, to charge their mobiles you know uh, sometimes uh, uh, there, there are various examples and there are various uh, applications for for electricity so uh, it is really impacting uh, the lives of uh, people in a very very grand way it, sometimes you can't actually uh, imagine it unless you have been in the field you know you see kids who for example in, when i went to ghana back in 2005 uh, you know some of the kids had never seen light bulbs and it was it was quite amazing that you know they were so remote in uh, the, uh, the northern region that uh, they uh, when they uh, when they saw so many lights they were they were so happy and when we tell them this is uh, maybe a gift from the khalifa it really brings uh, uh, you know uh, tears of joys in their eyes and you see the love of khilafat um, mali is another country which is um being helped. So what kind of work is the IEEE doing there? Okay, Mali, we had uh, last month, we had a team from Switzerland. And there were two engineers who went there and spent about two weeks uh, maintaining our existing systems. So we have around 20 systems. So uh, they maintained uh, uh, 13 or 14 of those systems. There are a few which are remaining, which when we go there, we also train the local, local teams. So for example, if there's a problem, then they can you know, take care, of, uh, take care of the system and then maintain it. But for Mali, we have uh, next year, we, int uh, we intend to install solar panels, uh, 25 solar, solar panels, solar systems, and uh, uh, the uh, radio stations will also be provided with, uh, with uh, solar energy. These are uh, uh, three to five kilowatt systems, so, so big, bigger size systems. So, uh, so uh, yeah, there's a lot of work that we'll be doing in Mali next year, inshallah. So alongside the focus on solar, Noman Sab, I understand there's some wind projects that are also uh, underway in Africa? Um, <clears throat> yes, that's right. Currently, we're piloting a uh, wind project um, because obviously alternative energy encompasses a whole variety of different types of sources of energy. So wind energy is another clean energy source. And so this is something we are piloting mm -hmm. um, at, at the moment. Yes. And uh, we have uh, with us uh, Haris Najib, who is the uh, wind energy project manager for the IEEE. And he's based in uh, Germany. Haris Sab, are you with us? Yes, Michael. Yes. Um, can you tell us a bit more about um, 
the wind projects that you have underway in Africa? Yeah, we heard uh, you were discussing about um, all the projects IEEE does, and uh, now we are going for wind. Um, you asked which projects we are planning. Uh, we have two countries in our mind we, which we will install, where we will install uh, two systems. Um, just to add, we are not going for a system which will consist of only a wind turbine. When we talk about our wind projects, we talk about uh, hybrid systems, which means we use uh, the PV panel, and additionally, we will use a small wind turbine. And uh, is this mainly located in coastal areas, or how have you identified the areas where you'll be placing these turbines? Yeah, there was a trade-off. Uh, we have a, a great team of engineers, and we did uh, the analysis of the locations, and we identified some. Of course, coastal areas are naturally good because of the wind, but we have to also look where our users are, our consumers are, and where the population is. And uh, that's why we, we, we did an in-depth analysis, um, and we have some countries which are very promising, uh, for example, Nigeria and Kenya, uh, because uh, uh, the wind speeds there are very high compared to other countries. And in Europe, when we see wind farms, there are normally multiple number of very large uh, wind turbines. Are you looking at a much smaller scale? And how cost effective is uh, wind energy? I, I, my own understanding was that the, each turbine was extremely expensive. Yes, exactly. Compared to solar, we cannot get there with the cost effectiveness. Um, well, we are using a small wind turbines, uh, mainly in the range of 1 kW, 1,000 watts to 3,000 watts. And this has several reasons. First of all, we have to look at the cost. And the second thing is uh, we are going to transport and install it in rural areas in Africa. And so we have a limit of uh, weight, size, and so on. And then if you want to erect it on a 10-meter pole, we will have to look at all these uh, um, um, weight uh, and uh, manpower needed, all these aspects. So that's why we have a small wind turbine in the range of one to three kilowatts we are looking for to install. And what kind of impact are you hoping that uh, your wind turbines will have to the people on the ground in Africa? Yeah, I think uh, currently using solar energy, we have only uh, on daytime limited time for a few hours where we produce electricity. And uh, if we have a good uh, windy location, we are inshallah able to produce uh, constantly over a longer period of time, day and night, electricity. And this will enable us to have, uh, we will have an enhanced reliability, first of all, because we are using two energy sources, solar and wind energy. And we will be able to produce more electricity with the same uh, battery bank and connecting more users to that. Brilliant. So, Hilsab, so many different projects that the IEEE are doing to try and help those throughout Africa. You have the solar projects, you have the wind projects. What do you foresee in the future for Africa with regards to energy? I think uh, these are temporary solutions. Off-grid solu uh, off solutions are uh, only there to uh, until the uh, grid electricity re uh, reaches these remote locations. Some of the, these locations are so remote that I don't think that some of the government officials have been there where IEEE has gone and installed these systems. So uh, I think government needs to get their uh, act together and really think about the uh, uh, how they can benefit the people living in poverty far away. There is no, uh, there is no sign that any improvement is coming their way. So uh, from IEEE point of view, we can do what we, uh, uh, you know, what we can afford at the moment. But the governments, they need to think big. They need to think about mega projects. They, think, they need to think about, uh, as you're saying, wind farms. They need to think about water dams, using their rivers and other resources which are uh, in abund uh, available in abundance in, uh, in Africa. And once we could be waiting forever for governments to get their act together. Um, the IEEE is helping the most destitute across the continent. And energy is empowerment. Tell us how this empowerment will help those of most need across the continent. So providing electricity to a country 
can dramatically change its outlook. A reliable, steady source of electricity. We talked about education earlier. Um, I talked about those going through education. But even to get education in the first place, to work at night, for instance, you need lighting, you need electricity. Um, nowadays, you know, the world is a connected village and information is readily available everywhere. But again, how do you access that if you don't have electricity, if you don't have connectivity to the internet? So, um, and again, industry and manufacturing. Um, as Suhail Saab mentioned, there's, Suhail Saab, the, Africa has huge potential in terms of uh, its resources and uh, what, it, what it can do essentially. And again, for that, having energy, or an abundant supply of energy will make sure that you know, they can best make use of those resources um, and really just responsibly drive their country forward. There's one more point I think that's important. It needs to be mentioned that uh, with Azul's guidance and uh, uh, throughout the, uh, 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 since we have started all this, Az Azul's wishes for us to, to, to increase uh, the work that we are doing. But one uh, avenue that we are exploring is also of uh, training the engineers in Africa. So we have many training sessions in, in Europe to, uh, for engineers to be trained here and then sent to Africa. But in, uh, inshallah, we're also looking at uh, possibilities of uh, training the local engineers in Africa so they can uh, assist uh, the, uh, the, the country in, in its uh, uh, progress that, that is long overdue. And that's the brilliant step. So if you empower the locals to uh, do the work and to fix their own problems uh, with time, Hopefully, inshallah, you should, we should see a big change uh, in uh, sub-Saharan uh, sub Africa. Uh, overall, we can see big changes underway, inshallah, in Africa, if uh, the governments can uh, make that change. But every small step that uh, the IAAA is making, the efforts that you as engineers are making alongside people on the ground, uh, being very warmly received from those in the most uh, rural of areas uh, across sub-Saharan Africa, our hope and prayer is that many more people will benefit and soon Africa, the uh, continent of so many rich resources, may be able to provide electricity and provide resources to others across the globe. We hope that this disparity between north and south, east and west, continent to continent soon ends and those people who are suffering from a lack of these amenities may soon benefit. With that, we take uh, the leave of you, the guests who have uh, spared their time for this show, and the viewers of MTA Africa who have been watching this special series of Serving Africa. We thank you and we hope to see you again soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have love for Africa. There is hope, hope in Africa. We are serving Africa. We are serving Africa. With all passion, we are serving Africa.